I'm Lorena Villanueva, and today we're going to do an introduction of users, groups, and roles in ServiceNow. We'll be working in the Paris instance, but in general, the steps shown today are applicable to prior instances as well. At a high level and referencing ServiceNow documentation, users are individuals who have access to the system. Groups are sets of users with a common purpose, and roles allow access to features within your organization's instance. For our example today, we are going to create a new group that will be handling incidents. Along with that, we'll create a new user and assign them roles to allow access. Jumping into our developer instance as an admin, I automatically have access to all application menus and modules within the platform. However, today we are going to focus heavily on the user administration application menu. To begin, we're going to take a look at how to create a user, which is essential to use the features within ServiceNow. To create a user, we navigate to the users module under user administration. Selecting the module will show us all records of users in the instance. In this case, our demo instance has 613 records. We're going to add to that by selecting the new option. After selecting new, we are brought to a form where we can create a new user record. Today, I'm going to create a record named John Smith. By default, he is set to active. Setting him to inactive would not allow him access into the system. After creating John Smith's user record, we see that neither roles nor groups are assigned to him. We know that John will be handling incidents, so we'll need to put him in a group whose purpose is to have incident access. Let's take a look at the groups module. After skimming through the records, I can't find a group that'll suit my needs, so I'll need to create a new group record. After selecting new, I'm brought to a form to create a new group record. For this example, we'll go ahead and name this group Incident Response. I'll set the manager as Abraham Lincoln. We've created our group and we know our group will need access to incident records. Our next step is to add a role to the group record. What will that do? Well. Earlier, we mentioned that the roles allow access to features within your organization's instance. Looking at the roles related list of the group record, we notice that there are no roles assigned to the group. Let's take care of that. To add roles to the group, we select Edit. After selecting Edit, we're brought to a screen where we're given a list of all roles in the system. Let's go ahead and look for ITIL. We've now assigned the ITIL role to the incident response group. Assigning ITIL to incident response will allow users in that group to have access to all incident records in the system. Before we add group members to our incident response group, let's take a look at John's user profile. Here we notice that John has neither roles nor groups assigned to him. Impersonating John Smith, we notice he has limited visibility and access to applications in the instance. For example, when typing incidents in the filter navigator, we currently do not have access to incident records. The only option for John is to create a new incident. After John has created his incident, his record is the only visible record in the incidents module. As an admin, we're looking at our new group record and we're ready to add John as a group member. By selecting edit, we're brought to a screen showing all user records in the system. Let's select John's record. We've now added group members to the incident response group record. Earlier, we assigned the ITIL role to the group. So what does that mean for John and Abel, our two group members that we've added to the incident response group? Well, it simply means that both John and Abel have inherited the ITIL role. Let's confirm that by navigating to John's user profile. Here on John's profile, we notice that his record has been updated. He's now assigned to the incident response group. And when selecting the roles related list, we also notice that John's inherited the ITIL role. But what just happened? John inherited the ITIL role, but he has a total of 25 different roles. Well, selecting the ITIL record, 
we want to make note that the role contains an additional 15 roles. And within those additional roles are additional nested roles. So that in turn gives us a grand total of 25 different roles inherited from the ITIL role. And to confirm that these are related to ITIL, let's go ahead and remove John from the incident response group. Now that John has been removed from the incident response group, we note that his user profile has once again been updated. There's no longer a group associated to his record, and after removing him from the incident response group, his inherited roles have also been removed. As best practice, it's recommended to assign roles to groups rather than to users. This saves you the headache later on down the line when you need to either add or remove roles to multiple users at once. So although it is possible to add roles to a user, we want to make note that assigning users to groups allows users to inherit roles based on the groups that they are assigned to. Now that John has been added to the incident response group and he's also inherited that ITIL role, let's see if John's access has been updated. Impersonating John Smith. I noticed right away John's access has been updated. He now has access to multiple application menus, including the incident menu. Selecting the all module, John now has access to the incident records in the system. As a result, when John selects a record, he has the ability to update and resolve incidents. Taking another look at how roles operate, it was mentioned that roles allow access to features in the instance. Assigning the ITIL role to the incident response group gave the two members, John and Abel, access to the incident records. But what about Abraham Lincoln, who is the manager of the group? Let's go ahead and take a look at his user profile. Navigating to Abraham's profile, we note that he's assigned to the incident management group. In the group record, we see that two roles have been assigned to the incident management record, one ITIL and the other ITIL admin. What does this mean? Well, if we recall, the ITIL role allowed the incident response team, the team John Smith is in, to view incident records. But what does the ITIL admin role do? Impersonating Abraham, he too has access to multiple applications in the system just as John did. When selecting the all module under instance, he can view all incident records. Opening an incident, he too can modify, update, and resolve incidents. However, since he is a manager of the organization, we notice that he's been given the additional functionality of a delete button. Why is this? Well, when we looked at the incident management group, there were two roles assigned, both ITIL and ITIL admin. So with the added role of ITIL admin, Abraham now has the additional capability of deleting records if necessary. Digging a little deeper into roles, ServiceNow does come with out-of-box roles that allow access to the available modules in your instance. However, there may be instances where you'll need to create custom roles for your applications, in which case you are certainly able to create new roles, just as you would new users and new groups. Of course, this may be on a subscription basis, so be sure to contact your ServiceNow sales rep to see what options are available for your organization. In this video, we covered the basics of creating users and groups, as well as assigning roles for access. To summarize, users are individuals who have access to the system, groups are sets of users with a common purpose, and roles allow access to features within your organization's instance. That concludes our ServiceNow introduction, and from all of us at GlideFest, have a great day.